Hello, this is Elaine from exomissy.com. My previous video and tutorial was on optimizing your blog post for search engines using Blogger. I had a video showing you step by step how to SEO your blog posts. So I'm back today with the second half of that and I'm going to show you how to optimize your WordPress posts for search engines. Okay, so let's get started. Similarly to my last video, the very first place that I think you should start is with your keyword planning. I have a post on how to do keyword planning over on the blog, so I'll make sure to link that below and in the blog post. I've gone ahead and done some keyword planning already just to move this video along. So here are my keyword terms and phrases that I'm going to use throughout this post. I've highlighted the ones that I think are good in green and the ones that I don't think are that good in red. I've explained this further in the keyword planning post, but I'll go over it a little bit here. So when you're looking for keyword terms and phrases, you want to go with something with an average to high search and a low to medium competition. This means that a lot of people are searching for it, but not a lot of people have used this keyword phrase to rank for. When you're first starting out, a low search volume with a low competition might be good enough for you. That just means that not a lot of people are searching for it, but also not a lot of people are using that keyword phrase. So it's going to be a little easier to rank for that phrase. You want to avoid phrases like this one in red here. It has a low search volume, which means not a lot of people are searching for it, and a high competition. That means a lot of people have used this phrase and tried to rank for it. There's going to be thousands of results on the results page. And the chances of you getting higher up on that are pretty slim. So just try to avoid it. You should also kind of come up with some other secondary keyword phrases and terms. These are things that you don't really necessarily want to rank for, but could come in handy to mention through your post. But once you've kind of got your keyword terms and phrases down, you can go ahead into creating your post title. Similarly to my last video, I've come up with a couple of post titles for us to select from today. The first is something I see a lot, quotes, inspirational quotes, terms and phrases that don't really relate to the blog post at all. They're not specific, they don't describe the blog post, they don't tell the reader what the blog post is about. The second one is something else I see a lot, and although this one does kind of describe the post a little bit, and it does tell the reader what the post is about, it's not very detailed, so search engines aren't going to pick up on this. This might be a good one to get readers to click over to see what your new favourite blush is. Not very many people are going to be searching for a new favourite blush. They're going to search for a certain brand or a certain product, and that's what you want to include. So for example, the third one is the name of a product, Gwen Stefani Blush. But it's really short, and it's not overly descriptive. You're not getting all of your keywords in there. It doesn't really tell you what the blog post is going to be about other than it's about a blush. The fourth one does tell you. It's a review of the Urban Decay Gwen Stefani blush palette. We've named the product, we've named the brand, and we've given a description about what the post is actually about. It's a review. The keyword term and phrase is at the end of the blog post title. It's better to have your keyword term and phrase at the start of the title, which is why I've highlighted the very last one. We mentioned the brand name, the product name, and then also say it's a review with swatches. We're using the keyword phrase at the start of the sentence, Urban Decay Gwen Stefani Blush Palette. And then we're also telling the reader that it's a review and will include swatches. This is more likely to get clicks because they're going to know that it's a review and we'll see photos and swatches of the blush. So that's the one we're going to use for this post. We'll click over and add our title. Now to add content. You want to structure your content so that it's in sections, bite-sized chunks, mini paragraphs. People tend to read posts by scanning through. They scan content, not read it, especially online. So you want to make it easy for them to scan through. Use headings to break up each section. Search engines read headings in order to get an idea of what the blog post is about. They first read your post title, and then they read your headings, and then your content, and so on and so forth. So it's important to use them in the right way. So I've already put together some content here, just so we don't waste time. I'm going to paste it in and then we can talk through it. So I'm going to start to structure it properly. 
So I'll highlight my first paragraph and select paragraph. Now I'm going to go down and I'm going to choose this as my heading. So I'll select heading 2. This is a H2 tag. You'll want each page to have a H1, a H2, a H3 and a H4. H5 and H6 isn't as important, but use them if you need to. Most of the time your blog title is a H1, so you'd want to check your theme to make sure. That's why we're starting with a H2. We're going to scroll down a couple of paragraphs and come to our next heading. This time I'll make it a H3. It's an important heading, but it's not as important. We'll scroll down again. Finally, I've come to the last heading. This really isn't that important. I just wanted to be able to stand out a little bit so people know they're coming near the end. So we'll make it a H4. Now that our blog post is properly structured, I'm gonna go back and add an image. And then I'll talk through how to add your keywords. So I have this image that I've already edited and compressed. It's important to make sure that you're saving your image in the right format and compressing it. This makes the file size smaller, which helps with the loading time of your site. A slow loading site isn't very good for SEO. So this is something to keep in mind. Once you've exported and saved your image, you're gonna to want to rename it. Use your keywords again, and then you can upload it to your blog post. Once it's uploaded, you'll wanna give it a title and alt text. Alt text is really important. This describes the image for the search engine. Search engines can't read images like they read text, so it's important to give them a descriptive alt text so they know what the image is. Use your keywords in here again. You'll also want to write a description. Keep in mind this is usually used on Pinterest, so you'll want something enticing that also is relevant and explains your blog post. Also add your keywords here. Once you've done all that, you can insert it into your post. Okay, so now to talk through where I've added keywords. As you can see, I've added my keyword exactly as it is to the very first paragraph. You'll also then want to scatter your keyword throughout the post. You want to add it in verbatim, which means exactly as it is, word for word. Sometimes this doesn't fit in correctly into your blog post or read naturally. So make sure that you're writing for the reader first and foremost. Let the text flow naturally. Don't try and stuff your keyword phrases in there if they don't make sense. Sometimes you can just use blush palette. You don't have to use the entire thing. So for example, here I've used the entire keyword phrase. But if I scroll down, I might add just part of that phrase here. And if I scroll down more, I might use a secondary keyword in this paragraph instead. So then coming to the end of the blog post, you'll wanna give a conclusion. Like at the start how you gave an intro and gave an overview of what the blog post is going to be about and included your keywords, you'll want to do the same at the end. Search engines tend to read the first paragraph and the last paragraph, so make sure your keywords are here. And then scatter your keyword phrases and terms along with other secondary keyword terms throughout your blog post. Now you'll want to edit your permalink. First of all, just to have a side note, you'll want to go over to your permalink settings. This is found in settings, permalinks. And you'll want to change it to post name. If you've come from Blogger to WordPress, you probably have month and name selected. That's good, keep it that way. Otherwise, your links won't redirect properly from Blogger. If you're on WordPress and you've always been on WordPress and you haven't had to redirect from anywhere else, select post name. This is going to give you the best permalink possible. Okay, so go back to your post now. As you can see, this is our new permalink. It's really, really long and it uses stop words. Stop words are words like and, for, an, or. So you'll want to remove these. We're going to edit down the permalink so that it only uses the key words and phrases that we need. For this, I'm going to use Urban Decay Gwen Stefani Blush. You want it to be short and concise and be descriptive while using your keywords. So next, you'll want to add it to a category and add a couple of tags. It's important to note that categories and tags don't have any SEO influence at all. They should be used purely for navigation reasons, to help your readers find their way around your blog post. To help them, if they like this post, here's how you find more in that exact category or that exact tag. So a great thing about WordPress 
is you can install the Yoast SEO plugin. It really just checks your SEO work. Here, you'll wanna change a couple of things. The content analysis will tell you exactly how well your blog post is done. As you can see here, we've got green marks. This one's orange, but that's because I've used Lara Mipsum in the post. So of course the text doesn't really make sense. That's why it's telling me to use shorter sentences and fewer difficult words. So we'll ignore that one for now. But if yours comes up here, try to split out your content a bit more. Divide up your sections and add more paragraphs. Condense your words, make shorter sentences and make it easier to read. Remember, people scan your blog post, so it needs to be scannable. So how do you check your content? Add in your keyword phrase right here, the one that you've used the most throughout your post. So we've added this in. If we go down here, it's telling us the focus keyword appears in the first paragraph of the copy. We used it in our first sentence, remember? It also says that the keyword density is 1.2%. That's good. You really kind of want it around the 1% to 2%, 3% depending on how many words you're adding to your blog post. The meta description contains a focus keyword, as you can see here. If you edit snippet, you can edit your SEO title, which we're going to do because as you can see, it flows over the amount. So we're just gonna remove the stop word and add in a forward slash. Next, you can edit your slug, which is the permalink. We've already done this and add your meta description. The meta description is what appears on search engine results page underneath your post title. This isn't really for SEO reasons, it's more for the reader, for visitors, to kind of attract them to your site and tell them a little bit more about what the blog post is about. So here we've added one that will entice readers to click over and we've included our keyword again. Going back down to our content analysis then, you can see that our keyword and key phrase appears in three of our subheadings within the copy. We've used it in each of our headings and split up our blog post while using our keyword. The image on the page contains alt attributes with the focus keyword. Like I said, add your keyword to your alt tag. The text contains 429 words. This is more than the 300 word recommended minimum. Search engines tend to need more than 300 words in order to get a good understanding of what the blog post is about. So make sure you're adding more than 300 words to each blog post. In recent times, longer content has kind of been seen to do well. So don't be afraid of adding too much text. Just make sure that the longer your text is, the more you split it up into paragraphs and sections. Make it easy for people to read through it. The page title, which is our post title, is between the 35 character minimum and the recommended 65 character maximum. The focus keyword also appears in the URL and we've never used this focus keyword before. Try to be as specific as possible with your focus keyword. That way you're not competing with your own blog to rank for that keyword. And there you go, that's ready to post now. We can go ahead and hit publish. So that was how to SEO your posts on WordPress. There'll be a summary of this video along with a checklist that you can download for free to make sure that you can SEO every single one of your posts. That will be over on the blog at exomissy.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.